Labisi, the farm lady and you are welcome back to another amazing interesting and educative video so as you all know we are rounding off on our series okay We're rounding off on our series how to hatch catfish so I know you guys or most of you who have been following the series you've seen how to prepare your hatching vats that is checking the pH the temperature how to select good brood stock that is the male and the female the things to note and then also how to induce your female brood stock then we've also seen how to remove the milk from the male that is the sperm sac how to strip your eggs and how to fertilize so today is the final review of course I'm so sorry I did not record whilst removing the spawning nets okay so the fishes are one week old today so the next clip you're going to be seeing is a video of me showing you the fries of course they're seven days old today already which is one week and after that I'm going to be explaining to you how to manage your fries so as to ensure what high survival rates because I know that is more like the major issue okay people do have successful spawning or hatching then what's next how do i manage my fishes after then so if you want to see all that or you want to learn that please stay tuned make sure you are subscribed if you're not subscribed yet give this video a thumbs up and then let's go hey guys it's shikemi or let me see the farm lady and i'm back again i'm so sorry our fishes hatched but i couldn't record that day yes due to my phone battery being very down so i'm here today to show you our fries they are one week old today seven days so i'm beside one of the vats can you see them yes some of them well, these are some of them yes so they are hatched already i'm currently changing their water changing their water so there we have it so as you can see them they are highly active they are happy and yeah that is that so like i said before i'm going to be sharing with you how to manage your fries now number one when your fishes hatch the first thing you have to do is what to change the water change the water reduce the water to about 80 percent okay reduce it to about 80 percent and then allow water to flow into your vat okay gradually all right gradually because they are still very little at that stage you do not want to stress them because excess excess stress huh, is going to what kill them so we do not want to stress them so what you have to do is what drain the water like i said and then um allow water to flow into your vat gently till it gets what filled up okay so that means you have to change the water in which they hatch in all right after changing that then you're good to go okay so for the first three days you're going to repeat this process or you can do flow through flow through simply means inflow and outflow of water at the same time but at a very very what low frequency not high okay because the pressure is definitely going to be too much on them so you're going to do this process for the first three day day one two and three okay now on the fourth day that is the day they are going to start what feeding why are we feeding them on the fourth day now on day one to three they are not what yet ready to feed because at that stage they are still what feeding on their egg sac okay on the egg sac or the yolk of the egg in which they hatch from all right so that is what they are going to be feeding on and then their mouth is really not visible 
at that stage so once they are done feeding on that on the fourth day apparently this process takes about one to three days that's what i'm trying to explain to you so on the fourth day they are ready to start what eating okay so you feed them lightly and you can start with a feed of 0.1 mm we have so many amazing brands we have copens cretin we have alacqua so you get what 0.1 mm or atemia or for some people who are trying to cut cost on feeding you can use what daphna i don't know if you've heard of daphna they are micro organisms they are very tiny and they are very very small that the fries can actually what pick them up and which is high in protein okay so basically you feed them 0.1 mm atemia or daphna for let's say one to five or seven days okay that is after the first three days of not feeding them so let's not get it wrong so you are going to what feed them that and when you are feeding please feed at a very very minimal level do not overfeed overfeeding is a very bad practice at that stage okay they do not know when to stop eating and then when you overfeed it pollutes the water and when you pollute the water the oxygen or dissolved oxygen in the water is reduced and we do not want that we want them to have a very conducive environment so that they can what grow faster so avoid overfeeding okay avoid overfeeding you can take as much as a pinch and then drop it what in the water for them to eat do not feed them too much at once you can just be giving them what drops pinches of what of feed and then the little they can take part time please do not overfeed it's a very wrong practice like i've said so number two is ensure you change their water daily ensure you change their water daily please and please do this okay it's more like um how would i explain it it's more like a human being you are just there you are not beaten every day and you are living in a, in a dirty room and then they are giving you food in that room would you would you be able to eat no it's not possible so it's the same thing the water is their habitat so we have to try as much as possible to make it clean at all times so as to what ensure they eat well they have that appetite to what to eat so now changing of water should be done before feeding them that is what i do personally change their water before what feeding them so when you get to your farm in the morning okay you what drain out their water or you do the regular flow through so now after changing their water don't feed them immediately allow them to what to rest they need to rest because they've just gone through a whole a kind of shaky experience so allow them to rest let's say two hours before feeding them okay because we do not want them to be stressed when they are stressed and then you are feeding them you are putting them through more stress again so do not what feed them immediately after changing their water allow them to what rest before what feeding them okay that is that number three monitor the ph of the water monitor the ph of the water i remember when i was talking about how to check the ph and all that if your ph is not okay you can regulate from your tank please do that regulate from your tank now that your fishes have hatched do not put soda ash or um, sodium carbonate into the water directly you regulate what from your tank from your storage tank and allow it to be correct they allow the ph to be correct there and then you can now pass it what into your vat so this is key make sure your ph is what very very okay 6.5 to about 7.5 or 8 is good for you okay so that is number three number four if they are dead in your vat you can what siphon them out siphon them out this is basically what removing out the dead using the hose okay siphon them out gently 
try as much as possible not to disturb what your fish is for some people they don't siphon i've tried not siphoning and then it has worked for me basically all you have to do is ensure you do what constant flow through constant flow through you cannot take that out of it okay you're going to use a lot of water all right number five constant sorting is the life to having quantity okay constant sorting now when your fishes get to one week approaching two weeks you start sitting shooters shooters are those ones that would grow faster than the other so please if you do not want to cry at the end of the day or have just 10 pieces of fishes at the end of the day please sort you can sort using a colander i'm going to insert a picture that is a plastic or small scoop net and a plastic spoon so you sort it out okay you sort out the ones the bigger ones so that they do not what feast on the smaller ones if you have 10 shooters in a vat that has over 5,000 other smaller fishes I bet you every day those 10 can eat about 100 okay it's very possible they can eat about 100 so if you want quantity sorting is more like a day-to-day -day thing that you have to do okay it's a day-to-day -day practice sort 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 and sort as much as you can all right next one number six if your temperature is low you know if you're running an indoor system good for you that means you can actually close the windows to regulate the temperature or probably use an external source like cold pot okay and then probably you can get a water heater that regulates what the temperature of the water so when water is flowing into your tank the temperature is what okay for your fishes so these are just few of the things that i feel or i think that you should what adopt so as to ensure what you have what successful production circle in the hatchery okay so if there are more i'm going to put it in the description box so you can read that up and then that is that so thank you so much for staying with me till this very moment this brings us to the end of this series on how to hatch cat fish so if you learned something you can drop it in the comment section if you have any question drop it in the comment section and then for further inquiries i'm going to be dropping my number on the screen now that's my whatsapp number and then i'm going to be putting it in the description box and also my email so if you have further inquiries or you need somebody to consult for you then you can reach out to me i'm your girl for that job okay so thank you once again for the support i love you all so so much okay so i remain your home girl she came me your love bc the farm lady and it's bye for now